right, today we're talking about the traditional tool. So essentially, I've got four lines here, 32 counts worth of, of, of count track. I click on the traditional tool, and there's a couple things that come up here, and this this tool works a little bit differently and um, has some kind of some unwritten rules here that you need to know in order to navigate it. So the first thing is um, the stride. Now the stride is going to be a default eight to five. If you want your performers to march larger, go ahead or smaller, go ahead. So that's going to change some things. But essentially you need to decide uh, what facing or what direction you want the group to go in. Um, so if you want the lines to travel and follow a leader on this end, you go this side and grab this handle and you begin by moving it to the left. Now that's uh, going to be moving in that direction. If you want the other way, you do it the other way. Uh, if, if you want to go forwards, um, you know, uh, that sort of thing, you do that. Okay. Um, so determining the direction of movement is something that you do by kind of grabbing that first performer and moving them in that direction. Now, I think default, it's going to move you to towards side one to the left. Okay, so my performers, I'm going to do um, a route that takes them to the left, turns them around and comes back. There's eight commands that you can punch into this that will get you uh, some results quickly without having to do too many steps and I will put those uh, up on the screen and in the description and, and here they are. You can type in LF for left flank, RF for right flank, MT for mark time, FM for forward march, TR for to the rear, ST for step off, SD for drop off, and H for half stride. Now we'll look at, a, at some of these and how they uh, affect the pathing of our people. All right, so here's what we're gonna do first. The first thing you need to do is determine direction. So we're gonna move in this direction. We'll have them go eight. And then now you can start to use your, um, your commands. We'll have them do a left flank, L, F, and we'll have them do that in uh, to take two eight to five steps. Now, if you wanted them to do one, that would put them one step away. And uh, depending on what you write next, it will affect uh, how they do it. So left flank one is going to kind of put them in the window or the uh, the diag. So the odd numbers kind of move them over uh, into the windows, but the even numbers, if you see, if I go back, LF2, so they do two eight to five steps, we'll have them be um, straight down and then another left flank straight over. So now this creates kind of a typical um, step two kind of uh, transition where they march left flank for two, then left flank to the end. And I'll show you what that looks like. So on the PyWare, they're moving. As soon as they hit that yard line, every two steps, they go around the corner. Pretty standard, and it was very easy to create using the commands. And what was nice about it too is it showed me how many steps uh, you know it would be until the end. Obviously, here you can see I've got five more performers plus another two steps in order to uh, complete the line. So I either need to select a smaller group of people or I need to increase the amount of counts in my move. Now we talked about flanks and forward march and right flank and left flank. I think those are pretty standard, but let's talk about some of the other ones. MT, of course, is mark time. Um, and so you can add MT4, MT8, and the performers will march, do the maneuver, mark time for four, and then you can say forward march eight. So let's see if we can play with those a little bit. So let's uh, put some other commands in. We're going to go the same direction. Have them go eight first, and then we'll do the mark time. But we need more space in between them. So let's start by stepping off every two counts. Now that's going to put quite a few uh, four-step spacing 
we'll do mark time for two and then forward march to the end and you can see i've already created this little two-step gap here by doing that and that's fine if this is the look that you're going for so here's what it looks like now they're going to come mark time for two and then move again mark time move again mark time move again so depending on what look you're going for or if you're waiting for some people to pass through for the next line this is all these are all things that you can use to um, make the space bigger to add layering to your to your look and to allow you to um, have the performers wait if they need to wait now let's look at some of the other ones that are in here um, we have to the rear. So to the rear will immediately move them back in the opposite direction. Okay, so if they're going in the opposite direction, again, in this scenario, they need to have more space in their time. So let's do step, step off, and we'll have them step off every eight counts. And we'll do uh, to the rear four. So if you do it to the rear, you probably need to do it again to the rear and then go to the end. So that allows us to get that wave look and then they keep going. So let's see what this looks now. Look like now. They step off, go eight, come back four, and then go ahead and march to the end. So now you start to get that wave look across the group. And again, you obviously need to plan this out and see what it is that you want to do. But that's what the to the rear does. It makes them go directly backwards in that direction again. And again, you're going to have to find a way to make sure that you have that space so that people aren't overlapping. Um, let's just talk real quick about half stride. And then I think we've covered most of the... Um, most of the conditions here. So let's get rid of clear all our stuff out here. Let's revert back. We're going to go in this direction, eight, and we're going to left flank two, left flank two, forward march. Now, that's a left flank two, it's pretty standard. If for some reason you needed to come back on yourself uh, through this, you could always um, do this. We'll go forward march eight, uh, right flank two, H. Now you look, if you look, see what H just did when I added it to right flank two is it made it one. So half stride, comma, right flank to the end. And then now our performers won't be uh, running into each other. Now, will it be super close? Yes. But if you started with an eight step interval between the lines as opposed to a four, you probably could make this work. Let's hit accept and let's check it out. So you can see it's close, obviously, but it's something that could be done if you wanted to. So they're going to come around the corner. So adding H to your um, command will make it be something, you'll see it right here first that will allow you to keep the look but use a half stride so again something to play with plan out and to have um, in your toolbox uh, for you know the next time you're wanting to try these moves thanks now one is if i wanted this lines instead of to move over and down and around. If I just wanted them to step right off and come around the corner, I'm not sure how to do it. So left flank to left flank to forward march. Now it's still waiting for me to pick a direction. So I either have to go two steps to the left or one step to the left. But if I choose the no direction, I get this first performer that steps off and just marches 32 counts to the side. And I'm not sure how to get rid of that. So if anybody out there knows and can correct me on it and how to do it, I'd love to see that. Um, or maybe there's a rule. The rule says it has to be you begin by marching.
marching in the direction you can't flank until you begin marching. Uh, maybe that's just something I don't know or haven't ever ran into or done. So some advice on that would be great. Um, there's a couple other things in here that we'll talk about before we're done uh, going over the traditional tool. Now there are some other notable items here in the traditional tool um, that uh, you need to know about. One is called the action line. So this action line, which is the direction that people will be moving, can be changed so that it's um, at the 45 degrees. So when they when they get to the action line, that is when they will um, do their maneuver. So in this case, if you wanted them to use the 45 degree slope, they would uh, march to the side until they hit this slope and then they would do the, the um, flank. So here's the, the maneuver with the 45 degree slope. You can create some, you know, some really cool looking transitions here and then come out the other side and finish that up uh, maybe on your next page and have it end up, um, you know, going into a block again. Uh, there's and you can change all different kinds of degrees here. Um, so all these different you can play with that and see what it would look like, you know, that sort of thing. So um, this obviously takes quite a bit of planning to know um, how many, you know, where exactly you want to do these and how they're going to end up when you're finished um, and whether or not you have enough counts or people in each form to make sure that the series gets completed before you move on to the next thing. So it takes quite a bit of planning, I'm sure, to write the drills where, uh, you know, the bands are really executing these. So that's the action line and the slope, um, changing that and changing those degrees to make those uh, differences. Now, the last thing is uh, this, this uh, kind of presets. You can save some of these moves as a preset. So if you want to save your move as a preset, you click New, and say you want to do a um, left flank, or I'll just call it LF2, 180 degrees. So we want this move that we're going to create um, be something that we we do every time. So LF2, like we did earlier, LF2, forward march to the end. So that's your thing. You want to save that as a little preset. You can hit save and accept. And now that is saved in your um, tool for the next time. So say we do it again, traditional tool, there it is. And as long as we tell it what direction to go, it will use our preset um, in the way that we wanna do it. Now here's something I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna save one to the right and see if it does the same thing. So let's do new. Let's do right flank to 180 degrees and call that OK. We'll go this way. We'll go RF2, RF2, FM. Save our preset, accept. So now we have one that goes right flank and comes around. And let's see if when we go in, if our presets were saved correctly. Select our performers, traditional tool. The right flank comes up first because that was the last one I think we did, but let's go left. Oop, it switches, very good. I can imagine that some of the designers for some of the bands that use this traditional style have these saved as presets to save them a lot of time. I hope that uh, this tutorial over the traditional tool has been uh, helpful to you. I know that uh, this uh, style of drill is definitely one that I am not as well versed in and I'm learning. Um, so if you could, if you are watching this and you have some answers to these questions, feel free please to um, put your answers in the comments either on YouTube or on Facebook because um, it certainly is 
a, seems like a, a pretty robust tool and I want to learn how to, you know, use it even better uh, so that maybe it can become a part of my process when I go to write my drills. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like these Pyware videos.